So we're walking away from the fire and it's pitch black. We're in the middle of nowhere. And I go, Wayne, how, how can you see? He goes, I just follow the light. I go, what light? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. He was holding it up like a light. <laughs> like a lantern. Yeah. He was 100% naked walking through the woods. He walked out with zero scratches. He didn't fall. He, for whatever reason, was seeing. I, wa I was walking into trees. I fell over. <laughs> he was in a tree pulling down branches because he could see with the light. Now, I asked somebody about this before. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, it was so fucking crazy to me because I'm like, that is definitely not a light. It's gin. How <laughs> and there's only a little left. <laughs> yeah. How are we doing this right now? This dude, it was the craziest thing. And we're live. On Monday nights, you know, I do a show where I'll take like 100, 200 milligrams. I'll eat maybe gram and a half, two grams of mushrooms. And then I'll smoke a joint. And then I turn on my camera. Jeez, it's, all called right. the high, it's called the high live. How do the, <laughs> how do the mushrooms mix with the weed make you feel? Uh, fucking awesome. That's I not enough it. for you to hallucinate or anything. It's no, just no, it's a nice low feel... dose. He's almost micro dosing at that point. It's, it's Wait, well, two, gra two, two grams, grams of mushrooms. Two grams is is basically enough to make your it. The visuals are textured. You're not seeing things. Mm. Colors are a little nicer, but it's yeah, not colors like are nicer. And it makes you really happy. That's it. Like mm. you're really happy. I ate about a quarter ounce, I think, last time I uh, I did mushrooms. What something is that like in that. grams? Oh. Um, seven. But that is a seven grams is a hero's journey. So he's definitely getting high. <laughs> it was more of a, a a terror trip. It was like an episode <laughs> of. It was more like a. It was more like an episode of of, of uh, Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> um, yeah i'll tell you this like, like like the happiest i've ever been in my entire life was when we got back home and we were safe and we got we sat in my bed and just hugged each other me and the, me and this girl who had like split half an ounce of uh, mushrooms and like like once we got back home and we were safe and we just hugged each other and like i didn't burst out into tears but i could have and we were just like so happy to be back home just, like I mean, rocking back it? and forth together. rocking back and forth hugging each other yeah how do you consume mushrooms? You eat them? Are so they... there's a lot of ways to do it. I think like what the smart, like more scientifically inclined people will do is grind them up and put them in capsules so that you don't have to taste shit or even That's make tea out of them. But um, what I do and what I've done the both, both times I've done it is I just, they're like tough little crinkly dried out mushrooms. So like I, you can like almost roll them up into like a ball, like a booger or something. They're not <laughs> sticky, but you know what I mean? You can like compress them with your fingers. Mm -hmm. And then I would take a chip and dip it in salsa and I would pop them both in my mouth and just much, much, much swallow with like some water and it covers the taste up and it gets it down. Yeah. Uh, that was just my like quick solution, like looking around my house, like what do I have to like chase? Chips they taste with? terrible. Chips and salsa, it worked because like they don't, I, uh, they're bitter he, and gross. I have some if you want to see them. I don't, sure. I don't see any problem with that. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> I, uh, yeah. Um, I know friends who are like into micro dosing now. Like, LSD? Where, uh, or is it called micro acid? shrooms too? Yeah, yeah. Any because anything that you're doing in shrooms. very small doses, just just to activate a little part of your brain a little more effectively, um, it is considered micro dosing. You can microdose anything. You can, I mean, uh, you could microdose ice cream, I suppose, but you're not really going to get the same kind of journey or en enhanced oh, creativity. I don't want to microdose snacks. I want to no, that sucks. Snacks. <laughs> uh, I like to macrodose those, but like, that's how I. Uh, Claim this the things company. in my refrigerator. I just lick the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Microdosing. Microdosing your almonds. California, they're packaging it now. Holy like, shit. Is that Satan? This is legit. These are the so this is penis envy. And penis envy <laughs> caps are known for their big heads. Okay. Yeah. This one's called Gorilla Panic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This one's called I so, Hold on. So it's all sealed. And so I, I get I, I these companies send me some and and but this is the penis envy this is the cap up is it legal in california no i didn't okay I it just it seems professional oh there in oregon you can right so let me tell you something there are legit companies on instagram who s talk about their mushrooms in california and i'm so like would you How suggest you just getting it through the mail <laughs> <laughs> it, it, and just mushrooms and so like 
there's always that debate of what gets you higher, the cap or the stem, but they're just dried out mushrooms. How you much do mushrooms there? cost? Like what? It depends. They're cheap. What's that cheaper than weed. Cost? Yeah, they are oh, cheaper. Really? I didn't know that. Like, um, I want to say that we paid like maybe eighty or ninety dollars for half an ounce, something like that. That sounds about right. Good. Maybe a little. Uh, that seems kind of cheap, actually. Do you but always keep the, the shroom intake pretty pretty small level, or have you ever taken way too many and had a rough time? Oh yeah. Yeah. Was that a was that a one time lesson or multiple times? <clears throat> well, the, the lesson is honestly, the lesson is know how you're feeling before you take mushrooms. If you're nervous, if you're anxious, you know, it's gonna ma be magnified. If you're nervous about taking the drugs, there's a good chance that you're gonna be tense going in. So mm -hmm. for me, the, anybody. Just relax and know that um, it's going to, even if on a bad trip like Kyle had, it ends eventually. But that only comes mm -hmm. from experience. Like, I don't get nervous on weed anymore. I don't get paranoid because I know I'm not going to die. I may be uncomfortable, but whatever. Do you know what I mean? I've been mm -hmm. that uncomfortable enough times where it doesn't, it doesn't make me panic anymore. And so I just, and I don't take enough anymore. Like, I'm not seven gramming it like Kyle anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm anywhere from 1.5 to three okay. just for fun. Just Do a you good have a time. vivid recollection of any time that you took way too many and you hadn't learned to not panic yet. Like what happened? Um, well, I will tell you, I was out once in Texas. I went to college in Texas and, um, there was this, we bought a huge bag of mushrooms and, uh, this dude, this is the weirdest experience I've ever had on mushrooms. I was high and my buddy Chris was high and we were sitting around this campfire and, and he was with his girl and we were all kind of tripping a little bit. And my buddy Wayne and Wayne, no matter as soon as he drank or smoked or we, he was getting naked. If it was a party, cool guy, Wayne was naked. Right. So Wayne was drinking. He used to drink gin out of this 1.75 liter, just straight gin. A handle. That's disgusting. Fucking straight gin. This dude. And, um, he, we, I just saw him and he was like, Hey, does we have any more of this popcorn? And I go, what? And I go, Wayne, that wasn't popcorn. Those were the mushrooms. He was like, he goes, they were pretty good. I go, did you finish the bag? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe two hours later, Wayne comes back to the fire naked out of the woods with all this firewood and his handle. And he drops the firewood and he goes, Hey, you want to come back out in the woods with me and get some more firewood? And I was like, yeah, all right, man. So we're walking away from the fire and it's pitch black. We're in the middle of nowhere. And I go, Wayne, how, how can you see? He goes, I just follow the light. I go, what light? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. He was holding it up like a light. <laughs> like a lantern. Yeah. A hundred percent naked walking through the woods. He walked out with zero scratches. He didn't fall. He, for whatever reason, was seeing. I, wa I was walking into trees. I fell over. <laughs> he was in a tree pulling down branches because he could see with the light. Now, I asked somebody about this before. <laughs> mm -hmm. Go. It was so fucking crazy to me because I'm like, that is definitely not a light. It's gin. How <laughs> and there's only a little left. <laughs> yeah. How are we doing this right now? This dude, it was the craziest thing. For whatever reason, he was seeing exactly where to go. Could it be that like it fire. made his pupils like mm -hmm. so, so big? Much. Like like yeah. like like dial what like more dilated than they would ever naturally even be. And he's actually he actually has night vision now. That's it's crazy it because I imagine the moon gave the bottle at least a little bit of something, Luminous, right? Yeah. And so I think so too, that his pupils were so whacked that he was actually seeing in a place 
he had no business seeing. He could see the code of the Matrix. You might see it, dude. <laughs> Which is what I thought when I was on shrooms. I was like, this dude can see in the dark now. Like I was, I ran back to the when we went back to the fire. I was like, Wayne can see in the dark. Wayne can fucking see in the dark. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know. This, something ran up and bit me earlier, and now I'm gonna see in the dark. I'm so thirsty. Now. Hey, give me, give me some of that light. Like, <laughs> <laughs> let me see Crazy. if I can see. Oh no, it's just Crazy. Gene. Yeah. <laughs> I like mushrooms way more than acid because it doesn't last as long. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I can see the end in sight if I'm not enjoying have myself. Have you ever thought of doing DMT? Yeah, I have. I would love to. Because that's like 15 minutes. You know what scares me about DMT the most is that people, uh, and it's really interesting, um, I, people say they, they see the, these, uh, these elves when they're on DMT and it's, it's a common report from multiple people. It's not like three guys were together. They all did DMT DMT. And one's like, do you see the elves? And because of someone saying that they're like, yeah, I do see elves now. Mm -hmm. It's like everyone who takes this reports that they meet elves that are friendly and supportive to them. And I, I was reading where they're, they're talking about exposing someone who's from a completely separate culture, like some indigenous tribe to DMT and then seeing if they see the elves. Cause if they see the elves, then we know there might actually be some fucking elves. <laughs> it does seem well, like, it, it's funny you said I didn't know that was like I didn't know everybody saw elves, but literally a buddy of mine who the only friend I know who did DMT, he was like, Yeah, I was on the surface of the moon and this little creature was telling me everything's gonna be okay. You're worried about things that don't matter as much as you think. And and I left the moon feeling better. And it's like <laughs> <laughs> let me ask yeah, you a question. Does this for any of you guys? open up the possibility that there are just different realms that our, br our normal brains don't have access to. Yeah. 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 I, I totally believe that because like, if you want to look at like something that actually is based in science and isn't like tomfoolery and you, and you just have to believe in, look at the wavelength of light that we can perceive versus how large the wavelength of light actually is. Like we can mm -hmm. see from um, red to violet. That's the, that's the expanse of visible light that we're able to perceive with our, with our human eyes. Lots of animals can see infrared or, uh, or, or like various other spectrums of light. Yeah. And there's tons of uh, stuff on the spectrum that like, not even animals can see that we have to use uh, like advanced machinery and like scientific e experiments to like, you know, be aware of. So like maybe there is some other plane of existence or something like that, some other dimension, something that you're opening your mind up to with DMT. Um, they say that it's released in large amounts when you're born and when you die. Uh, and scary. Uh, yeah, I know. Right. Um, but the other way that they've described those elves is by talking about, um, but, but they've described them as gray aliens. And, uh, and that is my biggest fear ever is the gray aliens, like from the fucking X files and shit yeah. that like take you up in the, in the, in the, in the, in the ship and torture you. So I feel like if I saw the elves, I'd be fucking drop kicking them and fucking, fucking, I'm like, I like start an interdimensional war with the elves. They're like, like, we've never met a violent one before. They're always so friendly when they're here. And I, I, maybe I started. You're always so and, nice when they get here. Yeah. <laughs> big guy drop kick little Steve. Hey, like, like Dave can't see anymore. He poked his eyes out. I'm up there just fucking choking out elves. Like, like maybe I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't experiment with that stuff. Maybe start with the gram of weed and go from there or not gram. The yeah. A gram of con that's what it is, right? That's it. Yeah. It, it's, it's a, of edibles. Yeah. Edibles, oh, yeah. I'm not going to do a, um, Oh, I mean a gram of concentrate ain't no, is no big deal. I mean, all right, let me backtrack a little. It's a big deal. But it's pales in comparison to a gram of edibles. It's like the mm -hmm. difference between like drinking six shots really quick and drinking a bottle of tequila. Like six shots is gonna get you pretty fucked up, but you'll be fine in a few hours. You drink a bottle mm -hmm. of tequila, it's gonna change your your opinions on alcohol for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be feeling horrible that evening and the next day. Yeah, it's a big difference. I mean, some of those really intense hallucinogens really scare me. Like I don't know, I don't think I would ever try DMT. It just, it seems spooky. And I also, I, I'm, maybe I'm coming in on Woody's side with this. I don't think that it's going to give you visions into an alternate reality. Oh, okay. Obviously, these alternate realities are bullshit. And there is no infrared elves or whatever. This is insanity. We would discover them through other means. Uh, how, where did you well, learn well, What other means, Woody? What, missing like, socks. When, when your brain, let me ask you something. Okay. Missing socks. So when you hear about people <laughs> tripping and and what do you think that is that your brain is accessing? 
there's some sort of like a false sensory input that's going on there. I don't think your brain is accessing a real realm that we can't otherwise access. What we've done instead is we've altered your brain to get false input. Okay. Yeah. Which look, if it's a good time and it doesn't hurt anyone, do it. Do it. Like like enjoy your life. Like I'm I'm not judging. I'm just saying there's no scientific discoveries happening here this is just fun this is doing drugs guys <laughs> we're doing drugs <laughs> you're having a great friday night but you're not breaking new grounds in that dmt from what i understand and like i said i've never done it my buddy had a dmt vape which sounds real dangerous yeah Holy shit. i didn't know they yeah had that. i didn't oh, know really? that existed Dude, can, can yes that? that exists where did you but guys learn your stack ranking of from what i dangerous? understand it feels like you're tripping for like hours and you're only high for like 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's the thing is the time perception from what I understand is it's like a 15, 9, 10, 15 minute yeah. thing. But your perception of time is altered in such a way that you do not feel like nine minutes just transpired. You have gone on an entire fucking vacation in your mind in the last 15 minutes. And those people almost always come out like changed as as as, as individuals. Like, like they feel like they've experienced something life-changing what why did you guys all freak out when you heard vape i hear vape and i think it's the gentlest kindest way to take oh pot, I'm told. well but, but it's right? just um it's not that i i have an experience with it or anything it's just that like the idea that they take it from what's already like an experimental like drop or whatever you're going to put on your tongue and vaporize it and and put it into the like respiratory system it's just like a step further it's like it's like if you told me that they have a heroin vape mm -hmm. like holy shit they're vaping heroin Oh my God. Like, yeah, I like to put it in my eyeballs though. That's the real hardcore way. Like, oh, no, no, can't no. we just shoot I, in our vein? I don't have the same. I hear shooting directly into your bloodstream. And I think that's way more hardcore than vaping it. But oh, I, I'm not saying doubt. I'm right. Okay. So you hear that too. Yeah. But you guys all heard vaping DMT and thought. Of I was it really as, just surprised that it's a thing. Uh -oh. Yeah. For me, when I heard Woody, what, what was surprising, it's the ease of which you can just carry it around. Oh, like I was like, so I can just have a, va a DMT vape pen at the airport. So they've taken Dude. something extreme and made it like, yeah, like something like teenagers would do in the high school hallway. So yeah, I have some, I have some statistics about DMT experiences where they exposed like a, a study group to DMT and they, they asked them about their, their, uh, their experience. And the, so it's broken down percentage wise. Um, apparently most people said that they did the beings that they, encountered were not hallucinations about three of course these are people on dmt right but mm -hmm. still it just gives you an idea of what you're perceiving on dmt uh, about three quarters of respondents said that they believe the the beings were real but that they exist in some kind of different dimension or reality and only nine percent said the being existed completely within myself so like, like one in ten people like agree with like the idea that i oh, you know i just saw some shit because i was on some drugs that's interesting um the uh, eighty-one percent said that they found the encounter to be realer than reality. They felt like this was a more real version of existence than what real life, quote unquote, feels like. Um, you could get a bit of of bias just in the people, the kind of people that are most willing to sign up for a DMT study. I would imagine, perhaps. Sure. I, I want to know. So that my Joe Rogan talks about DMT and often says like it's like upgrading your art. RPG character, right? Suddenly you're more creative, you're more open-minded, you're a better version of yourself than prior to the DMT experience. I would like to hear Kyle study and know what happened to these people afterwards. Was there any change, any measurable change? Did their income go up? Did their did, did they get into a creative field? Or, or are they just literally the same dude they were before? The encounters were mm -hmm. often followed by lasting changes in well-being and beliefs. About one quarter of respondents said <clears throat> that they were atheists before the encounter, but only 10% said that said they were afterwards. Additionally, approximately one third of respondents uh, reported that before the encounter, their belief system included a belief in ultimate reality, higher power, God, or universal divinity, but a significant a larger percentage, 58% of respondents reported this belief system after the encounter. Um, what's more, 89% of the account, uh, respondents said that the encounter led to lasting improvement in well-being or life satisf satisfaction. Why? The researchers suggested that ontological shock which is the state of being forced to where you're forced to question um your your world view may play an important role in the enduring positive life changes in attitude moods and behavioral attributes in these experiences 
Interesting. Whoa. So no, there's not some sliding scale of like income or anything, but it seems that the people who have done it uh, by an overwhelming percentage believe their life has improved. And uh, they started believing in imaginary things. I don't well, think so. I think the way it's been explained to me with mushrooms and it's just hallucinogenics in, in general. And the way it is for mushrooms for me was almost like it just unlocked a part of my brain it was like you know, like when you play a video game, and you're like, "Did I did I unlock that level? Like I've I've never seen this before." And so for me, mushrooms it did that, but they say that DMT takes it to a completely different level, and I definitely want to try it because one thing I will say about DMT as opposed to mushrooms or acid, I very rarely have heard of anybody say I've had a bad trip. Hmm. Oh, but mushroom people do. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. It happens. Kyle just told you. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess. Uh, you know. Yeah. And they, my friends say it's set and setting. And, and I don't know why they don't say mindset and setting because that's what it means. But yeah. You know, where are you taking it? Because they're high. <laughs> okay. <laughs> where, where are you taking it? Like the setting that you're, you know, who you're taking it with and the mindset going into it is. So you don't want to like go on a trip to Walmart to pick up carrots or anything? That'd be wrong. No, no. no. You, you might do end it. up having a panic attack there at Walmart, huh? <laughs> well, what's that? your happy place? Is your happy place in front of the TV? Is your happy you place? You love Walmart. A, a campfire is your like wherever that is is where you should. Dude, a campfire would be the fucking go to, right? If you're sitting by a campfire, like a nice chair, crackling the uh, maybe stars up above, like the smoke rising, the 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 the, the flames doing their thing. Maybe even get, have you ever seen that shit that you can throw into campfires that make them burn in multiple colors? Yeah. Plastic. Yes. No, not Wait. plastic. You. <laughs> <fucking> <laughs> There's these little bags of like granules that you like throw in the like campfires, and now the campfire is multicolored, green and blues and, and yellows and oranges that you normally wouldn't see in a campfire. Um, I got a bag of that in the other room. I think I'm gonna take it to Colorado with me. To, like, we've got like a big like campfire area in the backyard. We're gonna roast some marshmallows and chill outside. Have you guys ever been to Joshua Tree? No. Mm -mm. That's for my for me my favorite place to take mushrooms and just to be I love being out in the desert high like that or being on those rocks. We actually just bought some land out there, and I can't wait to just That's take awesome. mushrooms and never leave. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the whole like I'm split on like the different world thing because it would be so cool if that was real, but like I've never been convinced that shit exists because I had a really vivid dream, right? Like what? And maybe Taylor, would you ever take an hallucinogen? Would you ever do DMT or anything like that? If if I was in like a perfect environment, I would. I'm a high anxiety person, so I, I would have a. I'd have a lot of trouble going into it, just being like, just relax and take the acid, idiot. It's like, no, I know I've taken acid. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm about to freak out. I'm I'm afraid. Right. Is that it starting? No, oh, is that it starting? Like that that whole unknown is scary to me. If I'm smoking weed or taking an edible or something, I know exactly what to expect, but. With the hallucinogens, it's Taylor, it is look, spooky. You had to start with pot. You have to start with <clears throat> heroin. Jerry, just like it's time get for me to walk your through your anxiety. Yeah. It's time for me <laughs> to walk time, through that gateway into, <laughs> into the rest of the drugs. <laughs> last time Taylor and I were in Colorado together, I wanted to go do uh, the sensory deprivation tank on like large doses of marijuana. Uh, for mm -hmm. those who don't know, you're literally basically in a coffin filled with very uh, salty water, so salty that you're incredibly buoyant. Buoyant, you just kind of float on top of it. And they shut the lid and you're in there completely deaf, blind, and with no, you're not touching anything. So there's no sense of touch anymore. And then on high doses of things like marijuana or like real hallucinogens, like mm -hmm. mushrooms or LSD or something like that, you go on some incredibly vivid trips. I, like, like the guy who invented LSD would do that and like describe the trips he went on. And they I sound know that. fantastical. You know, there are people who are microdosing LSD now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that do the same thing as microdosing mm. shrooms or? I, I don't know enough about it. I read that it's uh, that they feel much more creative when they're doing that. That, it, that it's it's activating um, some part of their brain or stimulating a part of their brain that's uh, that really that, that, that that's part of the creativity center or something like that. You mean and with the microdose? Yeah. So they they're not going to they're not impaired. They're uh, it's quite the opposite. Is 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 their feeling? So if they're like writers or painters or something like that. They're just, uh, they feel more creative doing whatever their art form is. It was popular amongst computer programmers when I was one. And I always felt like, what? Like my competitors are on 
brain steroids this sucks like it you know you're on you're microdosing lsd to kick off your work day and being better at your job so they say I, yeah it almost unfair. reminds me Not of um the current season of american horror story the uh the sort of macguffin the whole like central like thing is that this chemist has made these pills that are basically talent incarnate if you are a talented person and you um, take this pill now you're not just a writer you're fucking mark twain you're if you're a painter you're not just a painter who can get their stuff into an art gallery you're fucking picasso like like whatever your thing is like like it amplifies it to a hundred however if you're not talented you basically go insane because now you have to face how untalented you are and all of their hair falls out and they become like ghouls so mm -hmm. this town where it's going on in there's these two groups of people at this point there are the ghouls who are out in the street fucking eating rabbits and then there are like these hyper talented incredibly wealthy people who like they are like yeah so we got you uh, two netflix deals and uh, quentin tarantino wants you to do a rewrite for him and like like, like it's it's a really That's interesting what? season I am going to microdose LSD and report back to you. Get after it. I like this. I think I, I well, I don't think I am. I know I am. I know somebody here in <laughs> Actually, Tennessee. Actually, I just took it. I'm going to be real. Microdose <laughs> it. And I had never thought of it, but I, I'm going to give it a run. All right. I look forward to hearing back your findings. Yeah. yeah I hope I don't it? end up one of those bald ghouls. So yeah. what's your setting? <laughs> what's what's your setting, setting Josh? Are you, you going to do it like prior to a show? And then you get a microdose and hit the stage? Right, Are you right. going to microdose and hit the campfire? Like, what's the plan? I think I'll microdose and probably try to write was what I would do. Okay. Um, you know, I like uh, the stage. Just my Saturday late show. I like to get a little twisted. But my thinking is like if I can't, I only have to work three hours a week. If I can't stay sober, mm -hmm. I got some problems. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So <laughs> I try to figure out a way to, but but also like, I don't ever want to be dependent on stage or being like, well, I got to be high to be funny or anything. That stuff makes me more nervous than anything else. Yeah. That my brain will start being like, well, you're not going to be funny tonight because you're not high. Yeah. And so I don't ever want to get to that spot.